So I have finally uh, replaced my old fishing ski. It's the new Stealth Pro Fisher 475 Carbon Fiber. So it's a pretty damn fancy ski. I, uh, I'm really lucky to sort of have the support of uh, the guys in South Africa where they make them and also the Australian distributor at AKS or Australian Kayak Specialists. And uh, yeah, the ski sort of came up. We got the opportunity to order it and lock it all in and it's finally arrived and I've sort of been sitting on this video for long enough having a bit of a crazy run with uh, getting uh, healthy and stomach operations and all kinds of things and new new babies which has been pretty cool but uh, finally got around to making a new video and this one's going to basically outline uh, the new ski sort of show a couple of things that I did to make it sort of uh, more fishable and set up the way I like it and uh, I'll have a couple of shots of me sort of putting bits on and then uh, just giving a basic overview of everything that's sort of on there as well. So starting from the back, pretty similar kind of features to what you'd find on most fishing kayaks. The ski is, this is the 475, so it's 4.75 metres long and it's 60 centimetres wide. And I put this one on the scales and because of the carbon fibre, I've come in at 19.7 kilos. So that is maybe a kilo and a half lighter than my last Pro Fisher. And uh, it's definitely a, a nice stiffer ski as well being in carbon. So I think I might get a little bit more speed. Might be a little bit more bouncy, but uh, definitely worth it. So you can see the centre hatch there. Uh, it fits uh, four fully rigged seven foot rods in it. And uh, the fact that they're all sort of safely tucked into the centre there while you're sort of launching through surf, that's what really sets, sets these things apart. You can surf a wave in, no problems, they punch through, and I've tackled anything up to you know, 2.5 to 3 metres surf um, in varying conditions and have managed to still get out, you know, <laughs> getting wet, but it is possible, you know what I mean? and I don't think a lot of other kayaks will really get you out there quite like these things do, with all your gear intact as well and not getting wet and soaked and crunched. So moving on to me putting a few things on and just adding an extra grab handle on the side there, which uh, helps in sort of lifting it up onto the car. Uh, if, if you haven't used them before, get yourself some of these uh, tri-folding pop rivets they save you so much time, Just they just pop on, they fold out in this tri-formation so you don't need backing plates. They're a real big time saver and if used correctly, they, they're pretty strong. Uh, oh, there's me cutting into the uh, centre console there. Uh, I decided to install the sounder as I've done in the past, which is um, sort of flush mounted in the centre. Uh, I have a pretty fancy new sounder, um, thanks to Lawrence and uh, it's the Lawrence TI5 uh, and it's a touchscreen sounder, it's got side scan. Uh, it presented a few problems when it came to the transducer needing to be mounted on the outside but it all came together pretty well so I'm pretty happy with that. I'll probably have another video that sort of features that a little more in depth at some point. And I decided, a lot of people said just leave it black and carbon, but I, I, for safety reasons and also because I just like my old colours, I decided to paint uh, uh, my orange back on, my big orange front stripe, which I've been running on the last two kayaks. And I use a product called Plasti Dip, which is basically like spray on vinyl. So if I get sick of it, I can just peel it off and uh, you know put new colours on or whatever, and it sort of peels off like a big vinyl sticker and putting a Railbrazer HD point on there just for the back camera. Just simple mods. You don't really need to do a whole lot actually to these because they come with most of the, the real essentials like the four rod holders and all the things are sort of there for you ready to go. I guess that's why it's the Pro Fisher model so it's, it really is geared up for um, fishing straight off the bat and then you can just add some simple things that get you running straight away. So here it is in all its glory, you can see the colours on there now, that fluoro, man, that fluoro stays on surprisingly well. Um, this uh, is sort of UV stabilised and it sticks on and is high vis proper fluoro uh, and not just bright orange and it stayed on for at least say almost two years I'd say and it was still pretty bright on the last kayak so hopefully I get as long a run out of it as I did then. 
can see the uh, flush mount turned out really nice and uh, sort of fit it in perfectly and there's still plenty of uh, fiberglass around it so it's uh, not going to sort of be a problem structurally. And then you can see the uh, transducer which uh, just clips on, it doesn't need anything else to clip on, it just sort of pops over the, uh, the edge of the footwell there and it stays on nicely. A little bit of drag but we'll see sort of uh, what we do with that. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to leave it there mounted permanently or I sort of come up with a better method. The GoPro on the front there is just mounted with suction cup because quite often I uh, sort of hit it with the paddle or it gets caught on the paddle leash when I fall off. So uh, it's always good to just have it pop off rather than rip holes with uh, screws ripping out and things like that. It's uh, a nicely buttoned down hatch. You can see the straps that come, they sort of they crank down really tight so it's almost a watertight seal if you muck around with the seals a little bit more you can get them to pretty much seal watertight so the centre hatch can actually be quite dry even after you fall off and get knocked off in the surf uh, I normally run with three rods but there's four in the holders if I'm doing a comp or something I'll definitely have four out usually two spin rods and two trolling rods you can see the pen torque. I've got a new clash reel which is pretty cool. I managed to get a few snapper finally on it. And there's the spinfisher V's. Spinfisher V's are always a good option because of the seals. And uh, you know, sometimes I'll be mucking around with a fish and I'll turn around and I'll literally have the whole reel under the water. So uh, the more seals the better. Here's where they really sort of come into their own. Uh, in the surf, so basically here I'm just waiting in a gutter. It's only small surf here, maybe one meter as well. And as soon as this last big wave came through, there I sort of hit the gas. And because there's no bathtubbing effect on these things, and the water just runs straight off the deck, you can pretty much just go for it, and the ski picks up pace real fast. And a quick jump over, and that's pretty much it. Like that doesn't get much easier than that. And here's a little wave on the way in. I haven't had much uh, surf time on this one yet, but um, you know, it rides pretty similar to the last one. And uh, it's definitely going to be a lot of fun on a big surf day. We'll try and get some good videos of that. So I've had it out in some good sort of choppy days and definitely rainy days. And uh, yeah, like I was worried in the beginning, uh, but everyone was saying the carbon fiber might be a bit more jumpy and bouncy. But um, I think coming from the Pro Fisher, which is a pretty frisky kind of kayak in the first place, I haven't really noticed it. It's, it's actually very manageable anyway and still quite stable and it's sort of almost enjoyable to be able to sort of be so in contact with the water and feel it jumping around. So I, I'm kind of into it, but uh, you know, if, I guess if you're coming off, I say a plastic or an old super light, you might notice a bit more, but it's certainly manageable and something you get used to very quickly. And then I uh, managed to get a couple of fish. There's a little pearl perch, not uh, the biggest guy. <laughs> so a lot of people sort of want to get an idea of how quick they're going to travel on these skis. Um, it, it's really hard to sort of give an accurate idea of how fast you can paddle, uh, depending on what lines you got out, whether you're running into wind or chop. But uh, I would say my average was about eight and a half k's an hour and uh, you know sometimes I'll be running a lot quicker than that you know depending on if I'm running with the swell uh, but it's not unheard of to be traveling around those speeds you know give or take a k so expect around eight to nine k's an hour I'd say and we'll end it here I guess with a, a nice shallow water snapper in about six meters just off Fido's and yeah, looking forward to summer and getting into some good fish.